Well, good day, guys. It's another update to the pond. I don't know if you guys have been watching the series yet. We're uh, three in, well, we're multiple in. We're a couple years in, actually, to the new uh, pond series. Anyway, this is what the pond looks like. So that's the area over here. You can see, or maybe you can't see, but the top edge of the grain bin here will lead into an edge or shelf up here near the edge. And then we won't have to fill this crevice in here to tie in and then we can preserve it as is. Uh, we have a grain bin sunk down 10 feet below the lowest point that we were before. So we're not about, down about 20 feet or so from the top of the surface. So we're gonna have an ultra deep pond. And where we're at right now, essentially what we did was we drained the entire pond and then we lined all the outside edges with geotextile fabric and then we put a generous layer of field stone all the way around the outside. The idea is to get rid of all of the silt that's been happening around the pond. There's a lot of clay around the edges and the clay when it's stirred up suspends in the water column and makes it really not good for trout. It's more of a catfish hole or a bass or panfish hole. And really what we wanna do is put our rainbow trout back in here and have a thriving population so that we can use it for eating. So hopefully today's the last day that we're gonna be draining this pond. We have to finish the rest. We have three more panels to put up in the grain bin here. And then I wanna start thinking about trout habitat. So this is the area in question over here. I don't know if we're gonna go all the way around because we will want some way for the trout to be able to access. So we might do a corner over here and a corner over here and we can leave kind of the middle edge clear and then have two tucked away spots that the trout can go back and forth on. And then that will provide shade and uh, protection from any predators above because Ultimately, we don't want the trout to just be hanging out in the middle of nowhere. So I don't know if I can illustrate to you what I'm intending to do here, but um, since we have to drain it anyway, and I think we're not really gonna be able to get at this near side edge anymore, we do have to finish that off. The geotextile doesn't quite go all the way down to the bottom. Uh, we have to tie into the upper shoal here. So it's all rock around the edges here and uh, rock around the far side. And then this is gonna be the shallowest side kind of leading into the deep, dark middle here. But uh, along the edges, because we just excavated this whole section here on the last dig, we haven't tied it into the upper ledge. So the idea over here, I sent Kevin a picture, is I wanna put some logs over top, extending from the top of the grain bin over to the edge and then that will provide some shade and habitat and a dark little space there for the trout to hang out away from predators. And hopefully we can drop the oxygen, the oxygenator down there and provide a nice little spot. And so instead of filling this all area in here with rock, what we can do is keep it as habitable trout water. So the idea is to get some pines or some other live tree, put over across and then weigh them down with rock. And so that will preserve the water volume. But uh, because this has been filling up with spring water, I don't think, it doesn't tend to want to freeze. Even though we got to minus 15 Celsius, I don't think we can step on and work on this. Not at all. Hardly any ice formed at all, which is curious. But that's why, you know, the pond's always moving and always filling up. We got enough sun to get the aerator working, although it's not plug down into the bottom we have a new area coming from a brand new company which I'm going to introduce a little bit later uh, Kevin will be down here on his way bringing the uh, princess auto trash pump and we've been slowly pumping out the middle here to try to get rid of a lot of the silt because we can't dig it out anymore this is the maximum depth that we can we can reach so we'll see how this project goes hopefully it goes smoothly everything else has been a little bit of a chore See if we can't get this all tied in so we don't have to we don't have to drain this pond anymore. The rest of it will just be able to do as it fills up. I don't know if you guys know Grant. You know Grant from uh, Kevin's channel, Modern Self Reliance. He's the uh, one who helped burn down the uh, smokehouse. <laughs> yeah, and he built the door in the main cabin. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, true. You, to... That's way back on Way back. Way, way yeah, back. Yeah. I forgot that. Yeah, you did help on the uh, main build of the cabin up top. 
So you got a day off today, you're gonna uh, do some labor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds like Not fun, right? Nothing better to do on a, a day off is a little extra labor. Right, have you seen the pond lately? I was here when we were digging it. Okay, yeah, I, was the, I wasn't I was here. Yeah. Yeah, I was away on the hockey tournament, so oh, you guys got lots of, uh, Lots of mucking out done. Looks oh. pretty good. Main fun was putting this grain bin in, I think. Yes. <laughs> That's why I wasn't here. That's right. But you're here for the finish. Um, we got three panels left to go. And then we're going to put some habitat in. And then after that, I don't know. We'll see what happens after it fills up. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully the trout will live this time. Hopefully. Well, it's deep enough now. It is, right? Yeah. You impressed by what we've done? or? Yeah. Did it's it... just disappointing that we had bedrock because we could have went deeper. Oh, did you want to go deeper? That was the oh, idea? Yeah. Yeah deep as you could go with the machine, I think, is what the plan was. Kevin wants to say something? No. No, you just... I just don't make a noise while you guys are talking. And oh, I got stuff. you. Because we got to pump it out again for the last time, hopefully. It might be like two and a half hours, three hour pump this time. It might yeah. be. It's fuller than when... Uh, you think there's 20 gallons? 20, 10,000 gallons an hour. 20,000 gallons. About 30,000 gallons in there right now? We're going to find out. I, I'm curious. It looks like it's slush. It looks like it filled it, up, slush, filled up, slush, filled up, slush. Actually, there's only a quarter inch ice on the top, so it might it might be all right. I think the, the slush would have floated, but I guess we'll find out. Full throttle. Oh. Full throttle. You probably got to get closer. Bunched up, right at the ladder, right like right. Get it on the, the bottom. right by your feet. Just wash by your feet. And it'll wash out. So there are obviously some pros and cons of working on this pond in the winter. The obvious pro is that. Obviously we're not destroying prime habitat for the summer season so we can actually enjoy it. That's the main the main driver. Uh, the drawbacks of course is that everything freezes and I didn't mean everything. So the geotextile having being wet the day before and now you know dried solid as in frozen and we had flipped it back in milder weather and now we have to find the edge and tie it back. So the idea is to make the entire basin of the pond completely covered in geotextile and rock and if we just ignore a section because we can't see it, doesn't mean it's not there. So once we got that tied back in, then we can start doing the work that we actually intended to do. But this was something that was keeping us busy while we were pumping up the pond. And of course, it uh, requires us less pumping during the winter because the water's not flowing as fast. It's not typically raining, but it still was one or two hours up to three or four hours at 10 gallons per hour of emptying to get the pond to a workable condition and that had to happen probably every three or four days you can see what we're dealing with here just frozen solid geotextile but once that's sorted out we're off to the races so we've got the last run on here's a good look at uh, what we're looking at so obviously that goes up the hill and then it uh, there's a bit of a shear not quite shear it's a good gradient here i should say it's not shear because we can add uh, more material here and we could fill it up but why waste that space? So this is the spot here that we were gonna keep kind of open and uh, we're gonna build the, the fish structure is gonna go from um, over here and sit on top of here and then we can pile rocks on top or we can just leave it as a, like a, a driftwood kind of deal. And then the fish should be able to swim from up here down below and then be able to use this kind of space over here. And then the trick is obviously gonna be on this side here where we're gonna to have to uh, tie into the wall here. So we're gonna backfill all that. And then the rocks are gonna come up to the lip. We haven't figured out exactly how we're gonna finish it off. We're gonna go like right to the lip or maybe right over, kind of clean off the edge there a little bit. So last little run of this stuff. This was uh, quite the job here. It's frozen in on the edge here all the way around because of obviously the ice and snow conditions so I've been chipping away at this and then try to remove a layer of rock so that we can tie in and then it'll be seamless but uh lots of ice down here from the pump water dripping down there and then uh kind of gumming up everything so we'll see what we get on that we're running out of running out of day at this point 
but uh, we will get it done. So down here we got one of the springs. It's flowing under the geotextile. So imagine it's gonna find a way probably into the pond besides flowing all the way down here. Once it fills back up, it's probably gonna seep through somewhere at a higher level. But now it's obviously flowing down here. You can see the gummy mess of the clay down there, which we're trying to remedy. Let's see by the end if that solves it or not. Or maybe we just did a whole bunch of work for nothing. What do you think? I refuse to accept that. <laughs> well, nature, physics, all those things will... Technology will... Technology fights those things. We'll see who wins in the end. We got the, it's another one year experiment, I think. Okay. Oh, we'll find out. That one go. The ongoing question of this, this tool, what's this tool called? Does anybody know? Podger. It's well, Podger. There's another couple, there's quite a few actually. There's been quite a discussion on this. this is Podger lining bar. Uh, what do you call it, Don? I just call it a lining tool. A lining, lineman tool. Anyways, there's, there, there, it's, it's geographic or, or district wise. We're using this guy to line up our holes. This is an old grain bin, obviously, and it's seen better days. So uh, we just kind of put it in, oblong the holes. Ideally, if everything fits perfectly, then we throw a nut on the end of the bolt and I hold it with a wrench and Don on the inside and uses the impact driver to kind of torque it off and it kind of, everything fits tight. And the idea behind this thing is it's very weak individual panels, but once you have the entire structure together, it is very, very strong, sort of like an egg. You can't crush an egg this way. Same idea with the grain bin. Give her. Uh, Bottom one. It's Don's in there, in the, in the icy cold. Ah, oh, we forgot one. You know there's one one or two wise guys in there t saying, oh, it's going to rust out. Yep, it's going to rust out at some point. The whole thing's going to rust out. Maybe 10 years from now. Maybe less than that. Maybe less than that. Who knows? But uh, by then it should be, have done its purpose. We can always go back inside, drain, drain it all, and uh, put another layer inside. We can cement it or make a form. Got the Whirlpool. What's the temperature? It's like 90, so just under 100. 98. 100. Slightly bath water-ish. How many hours? Under four. Four hours? From well, it was ice. frozen. It, there was ice. It was, was it frozen to the bottom? Or just no, like a like little bit? like an ice on the top and the side. Just the top. top. Yeah. Kevin built this on his channel, Modern Self-Reliance, so you can check it out. It's a whirl, whirlpool. It's a hot tub. It's a hot tub. It's a wood, wood fired hot yeah. tub. I guess not a whirlpool. Whirlpool has to, has to have some jets and things. I'd imagine it's whirly, round. Okay. It's hot tub. Anyway, yeah, stainless steel. So we've been heating water up because that's going to help us get the uh, fill in the gap down below, way down there, to melt a little bit of the uh, snow on the and snow and ice on the geo. I've been working away manually on getting as much as I can, and then the rest will just dump some water down there, and hopefully that does the trick. And then we can connect the two geos together and make it seamless so that we don't have any clay seeping in there where we don't want it. It was probably more dramatic you thought it was going to be, right? No, well that, that would work. It doesn't look like it's working. Well, it's got to sit there for a bit. So even after exposing the geotextile, we realized, of course, that it wasn't so easy just to tie it back in. Even the running water with the pump, you just draw frozen water over top of the geotextile. It doesn't melt it enough. It, it'll kind of expose it a little bit, but freezing cold water on top just wasn't cutting it. So we used a little bit of warm water. It kind of got the job done, and the more you step on the clay, the more it gets mucky and the more it kind of frees up. But we really wanted to get the tie back pretty well perfect. So removing the rocks out of the way, pulling the geotextile, making sure that it was on the bottom was the best bet. And uh, you can't, this isn't something that you can do with the pond full of water because the geotextile is a plastic material and it floats. So it's designed not to sink down into the earth, it's designed to float up above the water to make it a solid surface. So this is ideal material for making trails and roads and things like that. It's a pretty heavy duty material. It can take quite a bit of impact and it lasts. I think they say 20 or 30 years. So by the time we're done enjoying the pond, it'll still be working, I'm sure. So you can see how big these sections are and it's a matter of spreading it out over all of our workable surface and then trying to get it tied back into areas that we've already completed. And that's tricky obviously with the snow and ice, but we got it done. And you get the little mini X going, but uh, track's all frozen. Well, it's not frozen, it's all gummed up because of all the clay frozen there. Getting some warmer weather soon, so we, we kind of got to get it done. If we don't get it done, then it's all going to slough off. 
So it's either that or we hand bomb everything, but it's quite a bit of rock. So plan on using the mini X into the tractor and then tractor can bring them over and then dump them. We still got to do a bunch of manual lifting, but uh, any less work that we have to do is better. We've been slugging away all day. Uh, Kevin's got some new implements over here. Got the tractor, Kubota tractor. And then uh, it's got a bucket too and it actually dumps as well, kind of. I think it tilts, I don't know, it does something. But uh, we got a pile of rock over here. So if we don't get the Mini X over here, that means we have to break all of these apart by hand. And they're all frozen together, like that's what rocks do. They freeze together. So it would be a heck of a lot of work. So it's, if we can get this thing free, it's gonna make sense to do it. Yeah, throw them in the bottom. I'm gonna throw the smaller ones in first. So pull the deal. Yeah, we just throw them all down there, and then we can pick them up and throw them on the front lip when we're done throwing them at the bottom. We should have just back there. Just roll them. Yeah, let them just go down. Ooh. They all kind of fell out. That was the same for the last load. We got a little bit closer this time because uh, we moved some of the big boulders here at the top, but still got a hand bomb. Every single one down the hill and throw them. Well, you we should be able to get further in. Down at the bottom. And then hand place them because be we just throw them all down there and then they'll end up yeah, just filling it up to the top. So I got to go back down there and hand bomb everything so that we slope up and then we don't just fill it completely in. Lots of work. Like I probably Where do you want them, Chris? <laughs> Very bottom. And then I'll have to lift them back up. If you go any higher, you'll knock all of them down.
I climbed down into fish heaven, fish habitat. It took a little bit longer than we thought. We're uh, burning the midnight oil here at this point. We got just a little bit of daylight left. But you can see we filled up above the water level, so you shouldn't have to pump again. This will fill up with water here where I'm standing at the bottom. You can see over the other side, probably the water by the end of, well, by tomorrow morning, I would say it would be filled back up. You can see we got the wall. This is out of the uh, water column. So we just have to backfill all the way out to here. So there's a section here that needs to be tied in. And then there's a probably section here that's still, that we never actually finished to begin with. So we got to cover that, but it's under the snow. We're not going to mess with that now. It's going to get a little bit warm in the next couple of days, probably rain, wash this whole area out. And then we can have a better idea of what we're looking at. And then over here on the other side, same kind of deal. We've uh, finished back to here. We need a couple more rocks um, right on the uh, ledge there. And then all the way back, we've got to tie that in. So the idea for the uh, fish area is here. Um, so we're going to tie back in there, but we don't have time to do that today. And that's going to sit up on top. So I'm kind of looking forward to this. It's going to be a nice little scupa area too. So if I could swim down here and then tuck in, I might be able to spear fish fish that are kind of tied in here that are hanging out down here in the in the deep end if not um, they're gonna find a really great spot for shade i think it's gonna be one of their favorite spots you guys can see it's hard to sometimes tell on camera what's going on but that's a big belly here it goes way way down and way way back up so the difference ingredient there from the bottom to the top is probably five or six feet over my head just in that little section there and then it's going to go back over this way and tie back in to what's going on over there. So we'll probably end up going from here all the way back over there. That'll be the spot and the fish will have to scooch in through here. And we can make it kind of open air, uh, maybe not like sealed tight. So the fish can kind of come in and out on their own. Um, you can see the water level over here. It hasn't come up too, too much throughout the day, but enough. Uh, tomorrow, the weather is going to be wilder. So I don't know if we're going to do get back at it tomorrow but tomorrow's gonna be a rest day because that's very 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 hard physical labor to move all those rocks so I'll catch you guys tomorrow I bit off a little bit more than I could chew. More pedal. More pedal? All four wheels are spinning. I don't I get more traction. Less resistance. No, I just need to get rid of some of that snow. Your snow plow. Wow. Well, half skitter, half snow plow? I think I got too many logs. Maybe that'll work. Try it now. Well, we got one lonely log left. We might have to come back and get that one, uh, but that's going to be the structure. It's a brand new day today. We're starting off uh, early enough. We should be able to get this thing finished today during the day. If not, we're going to be in big trouble because snowmageddon is coming. Snowmageddon, no, actually rain again because the weather is going to switch tonight. It's going to get a lot warmer. And uh, with the warm weather, we're going to get a ton of rain and that's going to fill up the pond, which means we're probably not going to really be easily able to finish off this project. So time is of the essence. We've got a nice sunny day, nice mild day. It's actually like a maple syrup harvest day, but uh, we don't have anything in there. It's still February, so it's early in the year. And uh, we should probably get the stuff out soon because I think it's going to be a quick spring. And if you miss, uh, you know, when the sap runs, you pretty much miss out. So watch for a video on that one coming up. 
portable sawmill. Is it a 36? HD 36. HD 36, that's what it is. Um, so the objective here is try to maximize our lumber. What is, what kind of wood is this? Is it, it fell on its own? Balsam. It fell on its own? Yes. They get so tall and then they can't sustain because of the root system, they fall over. So we're going to make use of it. We're going to slice it in half, which is going to double the amount of wood we can get out of it. We still got the one down there. If we don't have enough, we'll go back and get that. It'll be, it'll be used for something else, if not for this project. So you can see how that's going to work. I can make a nice platform and then the top's going to be uh, dark so it's going to be kind of camouflaged and it's going to be more natural. The bottom's obviously going to be a little bit brighter and it doesn't matter and they're not going to butt up perfectly together and that's okay too because we want it to look rough like a log jam and the fish will associate it with it just the same. There are just three or four more to go. We can head back down and get this thing assembled. What happened? Two is better than none. Few logs short of a load. <laughs> yeah, the other, the other ones are, the other ones are right there. So we, uh, we almost made it. I actually thought we were gonna lose them a lot sooner. It's a good load. They all they expanded because we we multiplied them by two. So you added one. We added an extra. Oh, we added one extra board. board. That's what broke the camel's back. Yeah, that's it. But we needed the extra board to uh, fasten them together. I haven't looked at the situation here yet this morning. I don't know how much water we can hear water running. Oh no, that's the pump. Hey, the aerator's working today because the sun's out. So yeah, we're going to be working a little bit of slop down there. So the water did come up a little bit. Um, but we're mostly not going to be down there as long as it's not over our boots, which it may very well be. We'll have to throw a, a crate down there or something to stand on maybe. But uh, that's what we're looking at here, that gap still. Those logs should go over there, and uh, we should be in good shape. Whew. Those logs are heavy. As the snow melts, you can see there's a ton of work that still needs to be done to tie back in. This whole shelf here, there's no rocks on it because that's where we're digging. Uh, this that we took care of yesterday, as you guys know, and then we got the far side, so I'm gonna take a cruise around the side here just to inventory things and see what's going on. As the snow melts, we get more and more reveal. This side sh should be okay. I'm not exactly sure where the tie-in here is because I know there's a lot of slough off, but I do think there's geo under there. You gotta be careful of the ledge here. This is all blocks of ice removed from the pond, so it should melt and be okay. And then we've got geo on that side there, but uh, all the rocking that we did all the way down here, that's all gone now. So I'm not sure what we're gonna do there. Uh, we might have to backfill it there and then drop rock down. So hopefully the tractor can get over there and then we gotta tie back in over there on that side. So probably we'll get a good reveal tomorrow once all the rain comes in. You see the water levels came back up to where they were yesterday. I would imagine they would be even higher after tomorrow. It's quite the effort as you guys may have figured out by now. We are like two months into this project. 
So it certainly hasn't been uh, straightforward or easy. You guys might think it would be easier to do it in the summer maybe, but uh, all kinds of problems with that, with the muck and goo that forms and pretty much it becomes impossible to work with this stuff at some point. It just becomes too gummy and too slippery for even the best of machines. And then uh, if we did it in the summer, then we wouldn't be able to enjoy it at all, right? I mean, it would just be a mess all summer. So we're trying to get this done now in the winter, by spring, it should uh, it should be all ready to go, ideally. We'll see. Well, this one here is definitely too heavy for me to lift. I was hoping it would slide. It might slide a little bit better on that log there now. Oh. There we go. We don't want things all the way down in the pit and then we'll have to be moving them around down there to get them sort of oriented. You can see there's a big spot that melted that we missed completely with rock yesterday. But that's probably because it was all covered in ice before. Maybe a light one here, just to kind of see what's gonna happen. We can, uh, thankfully our, our workspace is pretty good here and we can get the logs all the way across to the other side and then cut them off after. So this is really gonna decide if things are gonna be easy easy or hard if you can find a nice spot to fit that in there and then aside from that we just got to figure out if we want to go what orientation we want to go that looks like it's not too bad and that'll tuck in there and you guys are probably thinking it's going to float funny enough if you try to make a raft out of like wet wood it doesn't tend to float <laughs> that, that good so we probably only had to put a couple rocks on there and then we've got an idea on the other side. I'll keep watching to see what we do there. And it uh, looks like we're gonna need a, uh, holy shit, a fair amount of logs to get this finished. Seeing as how it kind of spans, spans the whole length here. That's going pretty good there. I don't mind that. Oh, it doesn't kind of settle into their spot here and then what whatever's under there will settle and then when, once we put it together it'll settle even more that gives a good sense of what we're looking at I don't want to walk across this yet till it's all fastened together because this could slip off at any time and I could shoot down there in the water and have a drink because I'm thinking like if I want to spear fish down here what I can do is I can swim down there and if they're trapped in this little area here they're gonna want to scurry out but if I come there and kind of block them then I might be able to get a shot at them so I'm pretty happy with that I'm gonna see if I can lift this one holy crap that's heavy you got it yeah go that's what it is gone it's in the water now oh I needed that <laughs> No, no, that's right there. The water's so clear now. So clear. It's right here. Straight there, see? Yeah, it's worth like 30 cents. <laughs> we throw them in the bottom and you can snorkel them out. Oh. Oh. That's probably where you want it. It's not on the rail here anymore. <laughs> uh, you're actually getting the magnetar oh look at that you got her keep that handy for all the nuts we lose 
stick it to the side of the bin and never get it off. Oh, holy shoot, I almost wiped out. Should have just done it that way the first time. Where are we going? Um, more my way if you want. If you want it? Yeah. What's your thing? More my way. More? 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 Okay. More? So we got kind of a stiffener. I don't know what it is. It's the bottom or top of this whole deal. And uh, what we're going to do is going to set the logs on top after we fasten it together. And then that'll hold our logs from wanting to float back up. Well, that's a job done. That's probably the hardest part of the whole thing, maybe. Most tedious anyway. See, the aerator's finally working. It's not even facing the sun. <laughs> finally, the sun's out. A lunch break on the solar panel here. Nachos and crackers. I'm gonna get this aerator set up. Might as well, because we, <laughs> we missed the ice skating season on the pond. Unless for some bizarre reason we get a cold snap, which seems exceedingly unlikely at this point. So this will just connect here down to the bottom. A little bit of lube in there. Hopefully it'll slide right on. You see the bottom mud up. That's because it's still lots of clay on the bottom here, but that's the best we could do. There we go. We'll just let, let that bubble for now. It'll break up the ice a little bit. Get the water ready for fish. Just throw it up halfway maybe. And then if you want to go on this, kick it on this side. Might be able to scooch it with my shoulder here. Yeah. How's that? Yeah, that's pretty good. So, this over. Oh. Put, which side are you going? Yeah, we'll go the other side. Okay. You guys should move it. All right, so we drop it down here, and then we'll fix it. Maybe. Okay, can you shove it? Nope. <laughs> oh, it doesn't. It's just shade, right? They're gonna come in and out. You think so? Of course. I'm sure they will. I could switch at the end. It might not be long enough. Oh, it's already broken off. That was good. You grab that. This one can go toward me. Good. That's it. Oh, we're in fish heaven now. Look at all the beautiful shade down here. Shade and structure. All right. Ready? Well, here's a look of it on the outside. You can see 
uh, maybe you can't tell, but there's the gap there. And then it runs over top here. And uh, I'll take you down in a second to show you what it looks like. But uh, there's no tie back on this side. We decide to keep that a void. So any fish that goes here, they can go down and submerge. The aerator is right up here. So we might switch the aerator to be down there. That may be a good spot for refuge. So if the conditions get really, really poor, we get the aerator down there. This section here, they can come in here and uh, get away from the heat and also uh, get more oxygen. And that's what we choose to do. So that could be the supplemental aerator down there. See if I can get down inside. It's quite precarious down in here right now because it is filling back up with water and it's just about over my boot. If I move, I'm gonna go over my boot now. But uh, you can see the top here. It is never designed to be completely filled in, but uh, you can see all the way to the other side. So there's a nice rock ledge down there where that fish, the fish can be coming in across the other side there too and uh, you know, hide from predators. It'll be submerged probably four or five feet from the surface of the water. So herons won't be able to perch on the edge there, which we wouldn't want. So it's not a dock, it's a submerged log jam. And the other side here looks pretty good. I can't walk much further easily with the camera, but uh, if you guys can tell kind of what's going on and then we're gonna have, this is all gonna fill up the water. So don't get me wrong. You got, uh, this is gonna be the lowest point in the pond uh, or not quite the lowest. The lowest point is going to be in the grain bin. So this is going to be up maybe like a foot, maybe two, because it backfilled. So that looks pretty sweet. I, I'm pretty impressed by how that turned out. And uh, the only thing we've got to check to make sure it doesn't happen is that this doesn't float up. But uh, when we will add a couple of boulders here on the far side. This is all screwed into the top. Over here, I've screwed it all into the grain bin. So I don't, the logs typically don't want to float. Anytime any, any survival guide tries to build a raft, what happens is it sinks more than it floats. And when they put themselves on it, then it, uh, it, it really tends to sink. So it doesn't take much to sink anything. So I think this will be, this will be fine. So we've got a little bit of work left to do here. We've got still all the rocking to do and the tie back. So I'm hoping to get that done. And then uh, the next video, I should be able to show you guys uh, the result, the final result after it fills up. And we should be spot on ready to put trout in like like in a month maybe or so or maybe by next week by the time you guys see this video <laughs> I'm helping. Go faster. I'm encouraging you. The tractor is laughing at you. <laughs> Halfway there.
Well, we didn't quite get everything done. We got uh, most of this done. Uh, we just got to spread it out. We're running out of time here. And then we still got to tie in the backside over here. And then there still need to be tied in, but we did a, made a pretty good dent. We got the fish structure all built. That was the main priority because obviously it's going to rain a heck of a lot. And then that's probably all going to fill in at the bottom. This stuff here doesn't matter. We can fill it in later, whether it's wet or dry, but uh, we need to get everything out all the machine work done because what's going to happen next is um, it's all going to turn to sludge here so Kevin's just chucking the rocks up on top of the geo here and then we can spread it out after but as far as like walking around here even and especially using the machines it's just going to get way too slippery I gotta check out the next video because in the next video I'm going to probably it's going to be filled up with water again and we're going to do some underwater camera action and and uh, see what's going on maybe even get the kayak out over here and drop the camera down see what's going on and if it uh, if it fills up with water the faster it does that and uh, the warmer the weather the sooner we can put our fish in so i don't think it's going to be much time maybe maybe another few weeks who knows maybe a month but uh, we're going to get the fish in super early start growing them and uh, we've got a bunch of additions to go we got a windmill coming we got some new solar panels coming and I think we're putting some running water, a creek in here too, if we can manage. So there's going to be a lot of extra things coming up on this pond series. So stick around.